An overflowing life is a choice. If you're saved this morning, you need to ask yourself, do I have an overflowing, abundant life? I'm not saying I'm happy all the time. Remember, I used to be a uh, youth pastor, and we used to, uh, a lot of times, the youth group would, would work in VBS, and we would teach the little kids, you know, I'm in right, out right, up right, down right, happy all the time. And I used to always not like that song because I wasn't in right, out right, up right, down right, happy all the time. I was joyful, but to me, happiness is kind of giddiness, you know, Ooh, you know, I'm excited. Joy is a detachment from your circumstances. You, you no longer are, you know, kind of like a, a bobber being pulled by a fish in a lake that boom, 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 boom. That's what happiness is like. It's tied to whether you're feeling good and your job's good and whether you've got more than you need and can enjoy yourself. And, you know, that's happiness. Joy is a settled awareness that, as we saw last week, Jeremiah said that I'm called. By your name, O oh God, I belong to you. I have a, an infinite future. I have you dwelling within. I have my sins forgiven. You're in charge of my life. Joy is something that is inexpressible, and, and it, it detaches us from our circumstances. That's an abundant life. And people see that. They, they see a different Remember, it says they took note of the disciples that they had been with Jesus. Why? Because they had this detachment. I mean, you could beat them, put them in prison, and, and threaten them, and they had this detachment from their circumstances and this evident joy. That's a choice. Jesus explained the Holy Spirit in our lives using this image in verses 37 through 39 of a strong river of water that flowed out of us. But each of us have to make a choice every day about whether we're going to let him do that. You see, he doesn't overwhelm our lives. He comes by invitation. It's just like salvation is whoever calls in the name of the Lord. So out of us flowing rivers of water is a choice. So at communion, we're celebrating that we've made the choice. And let's together, as we go through these words, examine it. Because Jesus describes salvation starting this. He says, if anyone, verse 37, thirsts, let him come to me and drink. By the way, that's salvation. That drinking of Christ is a euphemism, one of the pictures, a metaphor of salvation. Coming to him in faith, being supernaturally saved, that's the beginning of this verse. Then Jesus describes the result. Look at verse 38. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Did you hear how Jesus describes the life of a normal believer? This is not some stellar saint. This is normal, flowing out of our heart. God planned that the life of us as born-again believers is like a flowing river of life, not a little trickle. He said rivers, torrents. This, this, is, a, this is a picture of, of, of power and of, of great supply. What does that mean? Well, rivers of water would mean that when we're saved, the Spirit of God comes into our lives and makes us joyous and thankful. See, that's one of the elements of this detachment from circumstances. We're filled with joy and we're thankful because we know our lives are guided by God's hands. Basically, how Jesus described salvation is rivers of joy. Uh, that's, that's what a saved person is supposed to have. And when God's spirit flows out of our lives, we're so excited about all of our sins being gone. Now, you know, I, I had this uh, deeply impressed on my heart as a newlywed. Uh, 31 years ago, Bonnie and I were married at Christmas of 1983. And, and then we, right from our wedding and the reception, we packed the car and went to California. And I, I went out to be on staff with Dr. John MacArthur. And, and so I was there in that huge church standing with thousands of other people our first Sunday in January, and, and John was leading communion, and I mean, I was just in my element. I mean, I had prepared for this and couldn't wait to come on staff, and I was standing there and just singing away the communion songs as he led us, and I looked over at Bonnie, and she was crying. And it just stunned me. I thought, what did I do wrong? She doesn't like being here. She doesn't want to be in the ministry. She doesn't like the church. She's upset at the Lord. I mean, I had every kind of thought possible. And I just, I mean, it ruined my whole service. And I started talking to her. I turned to her. I pulled out my handkerchief and, and handed it to her. And I says, honey, what did I do wrong? What's wrong? And she looked at me in, 
in unbelief. And, and she says, what do you mean? What do you mean? I said, you're crying during communion. She said, I can't believe how much the Lord has forgiven me of, and I'll never get over it. She says, I was forgiven of so many sins, and it stunned me right there. You see, I grew up in church. We went Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and any other time the doors were open. I went to church before I was born. My mother was carrying me all this. I mean, she raced from the hospital to church. I mean, we sat there. I mean, they, I don't think they ever let me go to the nursery. I had to just sit through service and soak it in. I needed all I could get. And I really got used to it. Saved at a young age, you know, six years old. I mean, the worst thing I did, you know, was stole some candy and other stuff when I was about five years old. And and, you know, lied and got angry and would have killed a few people. And, you know, it was rebellious. But, I mean, nothing, nothing big. And it was all, you know, many years ago. So I just stood through communion and enjoyed the music. I enjoyed looking at the words of the slides. I enjoyed the sound of thousands of voices at Grace Community Church singing. I enjoyed watching the precision of how the elders and deacons served us. I enjoyed the way John wove the service. But I was never struck until Bonnie stunned me with the fact that we, when we're full of the Spirit, to whom much is forgiven, the same loves much, and we have this overwhelming joy of our sins forgiven. But it's not just that. When God's Spirit flows out of our lives, the Bible seems like having God talking to us. Did you know that when you're full of the Holy Spirit, every time you pick up this book, I mean, it's, it's just... It's even more exciting than the latest news. It's even more exciting than waiting in line for the latest release of a movie. It's even more exciting than breaking open, you know, that, that newest game or that newest electronic device and, and, and finally having the newest and latest. It's God talking to us. Now, if it's been a long time since you felt that joy of your sins forgiven, it could be a danger sign that you're in a drought if either last night or this morning you didn't have an overwhelming desire to get into the Word, you might be in a time of spiritual drought. You know what? There's a lot of believers that are, their, their joy of being forgiven level is sinking. They're not even aware of it. They're, they're, they're hearing the voice of God in the Word is depleting. They're not even aware of it. That's spiritual drought. That's what Jesus said. I, I came to give you abundant life. When God's Spirit flows out of our life, prayer is so natural, it's uncluttered. It feels like the stars overhead have parted and we're walking right into heaven at God's throne. We just talk and walk with the Lord. And every day, all of life seems brand new because we are communing with our Creator. That's the rivers of joy that come with salvation. Now, let me ask you, honestly. Now, let's go back to the table at the coffee shop. I would pause at this point, and I would look right in the eyes of whoever I'm talking to. I say, are you overwhelmed that your sins are forgiven? Tell me some that the Lord's forgiven you of. Did you know, if we know they're forgiven, we can just say, oh, man, I was formerly a blasphemer and a murderer, and a, like Paul did, you know, in, in, in uh, Titus 3. And, and we can say how much he's forgiven us of. And I look him right in the eye and say, how hungry are you for this book? For the God who reveals himself through this book. How natural is it for you to pray? Do you find, do you find that you just, you, you just can't wait to have a quiet moment in your day where you can just reconnect with the Lord and commune with him? That's the rivers of joy.